Hello and welcome to the fourth and last video of the series I made to show my project called Motorized Fader SDAW Mixer Controller. As a reminder, in the first video I shown a demo of the full application and discussed the main concept behind the project. In the second video I shown the hardware point of view, describing the electrical schema and the PCB port design. In the third video we seen the Atmel Studio configuration and finally, in this fourth video, we will see it from the software perspective, so C source code I have developed to program the microchip Atmel SAM D11 MCU. One note to highlight is that in order to develop the software, I have used the Atmel Studio 7 IDE. Atmel Studio 7 is based on the shell of Microsoft Visual Studio 2015, so more than professional ID. Unfortunately, for the very same reason, Atmel Studio 7 is available only for Windows. Having said so, the good news is that Atmel Start can export code also for others ID, so no problem if you don't use Atmel Studio. Let's start our deep dive in the code, saying that I have split the main file into five sections for readability purposes. Include macro function prototypes and global variable, main function and infinite loop, initialization function implementation, callback and other functions. Always remember that this firmware is developed fully in C. So starting from the include, we have the ring buffer include files we will see in details at the end of the video together with the ST bool here and the Atmel start header here automatically added by the Atmel start configurator. We have then four macros defining IO functions here and then four LED spin definition macro here. PWM speed here which is a macro defining a value that will be used to set the speed of the TC motor in PWM function and PWM full speed macro defining the maximum speed again for the DC motor here. Then we have three macro defining the values for ADC an offset here that I used to compensate the ADC instability the rate here which is the value that I use to define the frequency of reading the ADC conversion output from the DMA channel and finally the buffer size here where I will store the ADC conversion result. The last macro is the channel value here. I use this value to make the code fully reusable across 8 motorized faders that you can set one for a channel according to the Mackey Universal Control Protocol. Then we open the session for function, prototypes and variables for the Q-Touch here. Measurement done touch, key status and touch status display are set by the Atmel Start library and you can find the reference inside the Q-Touch example file that you can find here in the example here. I added also is touch and was touch variable here. Um, to store the current and past touch condition in order to send the note on and note off MIDI message just once when the fader is touched and lived. Moving on, we have variable and prototypes for ADC timer here. All this code is provided by the start configuration is available inside the example files once again here. Then we have the ADC DMA variable and prototypes variable store current and past ADC output here and a buffer for the ADC conversion here. Then we have the three function prototypes requested by the start configurator and visible inside the example file here. Then we move to the PWM with a series of variables to store up and down speed here whether a full or a reduced PWM speed for the DC motor control, a value for the max and minimum ADC values here for calibration function and the reference value here which will contain the value of the last ADC conversion or the feedback value provided by the DAW to be reached by the fader when it moves autonomously. We have then the initialization function here for the TC2 which is not provided by the Atman staff as I have configured at low level. Moving on we have the prototype 
and variable for the UART. We have user main structure here. Then we have load and callback prototypes here. These functions are provided by the start configuration and once again are available uh, in the example files here. Final structure, user ring buffer here, is the circular ring that will be used to buffer the value received via UART. Last session I called motor contains prototypes for function to control the movement of the DC motor and to calibrate the ADC conversion at power up. Last but not least, there is the is operating variable that is used to catch the state when the feather is moving autonomously. Here. We skip for a moment the main function and we move to initialization and callback event handlers, which is this session. Starting from the ADC, the timer ADC initialization function here, where we have three configuration timing threads, one, two, three. For the reading of the ADC DMA channel, the first one here, running every one millisecond. The blinking operational LED orange here, running every 50 milliseconds. And the reset for the error LED blue here, uh, running every five seconds. So as you can see, even if this timer was supposed to be dedicated to the ADC DMA conversion, I finally used for some more purposes. The last part of the function here, there is the addition of the three threads into the task list of the timer and the activation of the timer itself here. Then we have the initialization of ADC where I register the two complete and error callbacks and enable the ADC DMA channel here. Moving on, we have the TC2 initialization which I use for, for PWM. This timer is not configured via Atman stars as I said and instead is directly configured uh, in the registers. So what we have here is I enable the APB bus, which is the bus supporting the TC2 here. Then I set the clock as generic clock source 4 and I assigned it to the TC2 here. Then I made a software reset here. I wait until the peripheral is completely disabled. And then I set here the timer to 8 bit and normal PWM mode here. I set then the period to 10, so that the frequency of the PWM will be 100 kHz, considering that the generic clock source 4 runs and 1 MHz, so it's 1 million divided by 10. Then I set the two CC registers here to 0 as default, uh, so that the duty will be 0 and of course the motor will be off. I enable the interrupt here, and finally I enable the timer here. Then we have the user initialization function where basically I register the three TX complete, RX complete and error callbacks. I set the IO descriptor and finally I enable the peripheral here. Then we have the three callback for the ADC timer. Inside the first one I read the ADC TMA channel here. In the second one I check if is operating variable is true and if the old ADC conversion result plus an offset is minor than the current ADC result or the old value minus an offset is greater than the current result in which case I toggle the operation LED here in all other case I switch it off here inside the third callback I set the user error variable to false and I clear the LED the blue LED test here then we have the ADC complete callback where I loop and I fill the ADC DMA buffer array with ADC conversion result and then I calculate the average here. Then we have the TC2 handler here where I check if the flag for the interrupt is set in which case I set the 2CC register with down and up speed value and I clear the interrupt flag here and here. At the end of this section, we have the three callback for user. We have the TX complete here, where I set the TX complete variable to true. We have the RX complete callback, where I read the byte arriving in the user channel and I set 
and I set it inside my circular buffer here. Last one, here, we have the error, where I light on the blue error LED, and I set the user is error equal to true. Last section in the file is generic and is called other function, where I put some private function I use to manage the motor movement, the calibration, and the touch display function. With move motor up and down, here and here, what I'm doing is simply to set the down speed and up speed variable with the value passed in the function parameter. Then this value will be associated to the TC2CC register in the TC2 handler as we have seen before. In the calibration function, what I'm doing is to catch the ADC value with the fader in low position and the ADC value with the fader in full height position. I stop 500 milliseconds and I set the variable for min and max values here and here. Finally, we have the touch status display function where I set the key status variable value here and then I evaluate if, is the, if this is different than zero here. If that's the case, I set the variable is touch here, it's true, and I light on the red LED to signal status is touch here. Let's move to the main and infinite loop. Looking at the main function, first of all, I disable IRQ lines here for initialization call and for NVIC register setup in order to ensure to not disturb these processes. In the ISER register of the NVIC, I enable the IRQ on line 14, which is the line for the TC2. In this way, I can have the TC2 handler working here. Then I set PA6 and PA7 as W0 and W1 pads for the PWM and I re-enable the IRQ line here and here. I launch the calibration here, and then we move inside the loop. The loop is split in two sections, the management of data received over the UART and the management of data sent through the UART. As first thing here, I declare an enumeration to get the ring buffer status. Then I read from the read buffer, the first byte, checking the status of the buffer here. If the buffer is okay, and at the same time, the red byte is uh, hexadecimal E. This is the value of the status byte for the pitch wheel MIDI message. Then I fill here the user ring temp array with the three bytes of the buffer. And if the knob of the fader is not touched here, I set the reference value with data 1 and data 2 of the pitch wheel message in order to prepare the movement of the fader in feedback. And then, I set the code to execute the feedback movement. If the reference value here is greater than the current ADC value plus an offset, and at the same time the reference value is minor than the max potentiometer value, I move the motor up here. In a specular way, I do the same to move the motor down here. In terms of the data sent over the UART, I launch the touch sense process and I call the function that evaluates the display and fill the variable is touch here. Then I evaluate it. If in fact the is touch is true and it's the first time that is touch, I send a note on message to select the channel inside the DAW here. Then I evaluate the value of the ADC result and if it's greater than the previous ADC conversion plus an offset or lower than the previous ADC conversion minus an offset, I first compensate some instability at low or high potentiometer value and then I send the pitch wheel MIDI message. Finally I evaluate if it was touched in which case I send the note of MIDI message here. There is a last element to review, which is the ring buffer that you can find under the ring buffer folder here. This file manage first in first out ring buffer of 128 bytes here. As you can see, there are 
self-explanatory function to write and read the buffer for evaluation purpose and function to check if the buffer is empty. That is all. As said, you will find below the link to GitHub in order to download the code as well as the board schema. Thanks a lot for your attention. Mm -hmm.